All right, ladies and gentlemen, 1.2, method of substitution. So we've been uh, solving linear systems, but we've been doing it by graphing. So you have to graph the lines and see where they intersect. Well, that's great if they intersect right on a perfect grid line. If, if the solution x, y, if they're both whole numbers, then that's easy to see if you're using graph paper. But it's really not the most efficient way. Uh, so today we're going to learn a different way, and it's called the method of substitution. You have a little bit of space for notes. You can write, this is solving a linear system by substituting, solving a linear system by substituting for one variable from one equation into the other, into the other equation. All right, that might sound a little bit abstract uh, at the beginning, but it's going to make a lot of sense as we move along. So in a linear system, you ha basically you have two linear equations and you want to solve it. You want to find the point of intersection. So what we're going to do, and I'll just talk through it in example one. Example one, we're given the lines y equals negative x plus eight. We're going to call that line number one. And we are given the line x, oh, yep, yeah, x minus y equals four. And that's equation two. So you're given two equations and we're going to solve this. That's find the point of intersection by substituting for one variable from one equation into the other equation. Okay. So what we're going to do, and these, they, the nice thing about this, this way of doing it is look how messed up this equation is. It's not organized the same way. Equation one is nicely in y equals mx plus b. So that's really helpful. Equation two isn't. But for this method, it doesn't matter, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I need to look at both of my equations and see, do I know what one of the variables is equal to? That is, do I have an expression for y or for x? Okay, so I look at equation one and I see I have just y by itself on the left. That means I know what y equals in terms of x. In terms of x means it's still communicated using another variable, x, but I do know that y is equal to negative x plus 8. So all I have to do is, and I'll try to jot down some steps for us here, I'm going to sub negative x plus 8 for y in equation two. And I'll go step by step. I know that where these lines intersect, I'll just draw a little sketch here for you, where these lines intersect, they have the exact same x and y at the exact same time. Does that make sense? Because they're intersecting at that point. They don't intersect at any other point on the whole Cartesian grid. But I know that at one specific location, they do intersect. They will have the same x value and the same y value. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to solve to find that point. So I know that I'm actually only looking for the point where these are the exact same. Where the x and y from equation 1 are the exact same as the x and y from equation 2. That's really important. Did you catch that? That's the only thing I'm, I'm interested in. Where are they the same? Where is this x the same as that x at the same time as this y is the same as that y? Now, why is that important? That means I can take my value for y from equation 1, which is right there, and I can put it into equation 2 anywhere I see a y. Okay, so I'm going to take equation 2. I'm going to write my x, because I don't know what that is. I'm going to write my negative sign. 
and then I'm going to substitute what I know is equal to y. And I know that y is equal to negative x plus 8. And then I'm going to finish out my equation. Now in this case I used brackets around the group, the expression that I put in for y. That's because I have this negative sign out front. I need negative y which means that both of these terms are going to have their signs switched once I do some work on this. I'm going to distribute that negative sign to both of these terms, but I need to make sure that all of y becomes negative. And since y is negative x plus 8, I need that whole group to be affected by that negative symbol. So now I'm at the point where I can perform some algebra on this in order to help me solve. So I said I'm going to apply this negative sign because I have negative y to both of the terms inside the group that I've substituted for y. By the way, what do you notice? Are there any y's left here? Before. No, there are no y's left, okay? There's just x's. Whenever you have one equation and one variable, you can solve it all the time. If you have two equations and two variables, you can solve it. How? Well, we just did it, okay? We substituted to get rid of one of the variables within the rules of math, okay? If you have two variables and one equation, you cannot solve it. There's multiple solutions in that case. But because we have two equations, two variables, we can solve it by eliminating one of the variables. We eliminated y using the method of substitution. Now we have one equation and one variable and we're gonna work with that. So our next statement here is uh, negative one times negative x is what? Positive x, it's just gonna flip the sign, right? And Positive 8 becomes negative 8. I can take away my groups, my brackets. I don't need them anymore. Now I can simplify. How many x's do I have? 2 x's minus 8 equals 4. Now I'm trying to solve for x. I'm trying to figure out the value of x. What's my next? I can add 8 to both sides. Okay, I'm going to jot these steps down for you as we're going along today anyway. Can add 8 to both sides. That leaves me with 2x equals 12. Now what? Divide both sides by 2. That's going to leave me with x equals 6. I'm going to put a little box around that. Am I done? No. How do you know? We need a y coordinate. Okay. So far I found out how far it is along the x axis. I also need to find out how far it is along the y-axis in order to give myself coordinates. That's a solution. Well, how do you figure I'm going to do that? Well, thankfully, I know that line 1 and line 2 go through this point. Okay? So when x is 6, the y from equation 1 and the y from equation 2 are also going to be exactly the same. So I can choose either equation... I'm going to sub in my value of x in order to determine the value of y. I'm looking at these equations. I'm going to pick the easiest one to work with. It's going to be equation 1. It already says y equals something. Okay? So I'm going to jot down. Uh, let's, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do first. And I'll scroll down. Sub x equals 6 into equation 1 to solve for the y-coordinate. All right, here we go. Equation one says y equals negative x plus eight. I'm going to go ahead and sub 6 in for x. Now be careful, I have a negative out here. I have negative x, so I'm going to have negative 6 plus 8. If I am 6 in negative land and I go forward 8 jumps, I'm going to cross over 0 and still have 2 extras. I'm going to be positive 2 here. I could also read this as 8 minus 6. That's a little easier. All right, so I'm assuming that my solution 
is x equals 6, y equals 2. By the way, this is now a second way that you can write the solution for something. And typically, if the problem is asking for a solution, you can write it this way, x equals 6, y equals 2. If it's asking for a point of intersection, you want to write it this way, x is 6, y is 2. Okay? Well, we should probably double check that we did this correct. All right. I, uh, I want to make sure that these are both true. I'm just going to do this off to the side. I have determined that x is 6 and y is 2. So I'm going to make sure that's true in equation 2. Okay, I used equation 1 uh, to figure it out. Uh, and you could, you should actually do this in both original equations. Sure, let's do it in both original equations. Uh, let's actually not, because I did it in equation 1 already. So I'm going to do it with equation 2. I'm going to go left side equals x minus y. Right side equals 4. This is equation 2. And I'm going to sub in my solution. x was 6 minus y, which was 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. Left side equals right side. So I did it correctly. Okay? That's assuming I did this part correct. You would check it in both typically, but this is good enough for now. Okay, so we have our solution written two ways. X equals 6, Y equals 2. The point of intersection, 6, 2. I'm just going to quick recap how we did it. We were given two equations, linear equations. Doesn't matter what format they're in. It's not a big deal. You're not adding or subtracting them. You don't need to line them up because you're substituting. I chose to use equation 1 as my uh, expression for substitution because it already tells me an expression for y. I know that this side can replace this side, can be substituted. So I did that. I took negative x plus 8. I put it into equation 2 anywhere I see a y. I did it in brackets because there's a negative sign out front. Basic algebra to simplify, then solve for the variable that's remaining, which was x. Then I take that value of x, and since I used equation 2 for this part, I need to sub it into equation 1 in order to solve for y. Okay? I did that, then I double checked it by subbing those values in and seeing if it actually came out equal on both sides, right side, left side. Okay, example two, example two, mm, there we are. Example two, we're given x plus y equals five and three x minus y equals seven. The first thing I'm gonna do is label my equations, okay? I wanna know every time I deal with this guy, I'm gonna call it equation one. Every time I deal with this girl, I'm gonna call her equation two. Okay? I don't know. I'm trying to be inclusive. Okay. Now, do you see a problem here with substitution? Am I going to be able to substitute real easily here? No. No, because I don't have one variable in expressed in terms of the other variable. What does that mean? It means I don't have x by itself on one side of the equation and the rest of the stuff on the other side or y by itself. They're stuck together. But... I mean, I just did a whole lesson on equivalent equations, so do I know, could I create an equation that's the same as, let's say, equation one, because it looks easier to work with? Mm -hmm. yeah. I sure could. If I want to isolate y by itself, what could I do to this equation? Minus, uh, x I could just subtract x from both sides, okay? That's going to leave me with just y on the left, and it's going to leave me with 5 minus x on the right, and that is still equation one. I have not changed equation one because I played within the rules of math. I did the same thing to both sides. Well, now I have an expression that's equivalent to y. And since I know that the point of intersection which I'm looking for, the y from equation one and equation two are the same, I could sub this expression into equation two wherever I see a y. So let's do that. I'm going to take equation two. I'm going to write 3x. And then I'm going to subtract y, but instead of y, I'm going to write 5 minus x, and I know that equals 7 still. Substitution. I've gotten rid of one of the variables by substituting it out for another expression that is equal. I know that it's equal because I see a nice little equal sign. 
Okay, notice that this time on our second time through it, example two, I'm not writing each individual step. Okay, but this is an added step. We had to rearrange equation one in order to isolate a variable. Maybe I'll note that. Rearrange equation one in order to isolate a variable. Do you think it matters which variable I would have isolated? Could I have isolated x and then subbed x out? Yeah, yeah doesn't matter at all. Okay, rearrange equation one in order to isolate a variable and now you're back to our regular step uh, from the first example, sub in the expression for y into equation two. Now I'm on to simplifying. So I've got three x minus five plus x equals seven. You guys comfortable with that? I didn't draw any arrows. Right, right, okay. All right, over here I have three x's plus another x. So how many x's are on the left? Four x's. And I'm gonna do another step, two in a row. Here I have negative five, but I actually want all my constants on the right-hand side. So how do I get rid of that negative five? Add five to both sides. Seven plus five is 12. Divide both sides by four. X equals three. Box my answer, even though I'm only halfway there. Now what? Now you take x and plug it into the one equation. Yeah, I'm going to use equation one. And what's cool about this is I can put it in either, either equation one because they're both the same. So usually you'll use, when you're checking your answer, you'll always use the equation that they gave you, okay? But while you're working with your answer, you may as well use the simplified equation. So I'm going to take this x equals three. I'm going to sub it into equation one, wherever I see an x. That tells me that y equals two. There's my solution. Now again, if I wanted to check that solution, I would probably take, I mean, I should be doing it in both, but let's just take the first equation, I've got x plus y on the left. The right side is 5. I determined that x is 3 and y is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. Therefore, left side equals, I would just write it like this, equals right side. Give it a check mark. Carry on. Okay? Because they're asking for a solution, I don't need to write this in coordinate form. I don't need to write it in brackets x, y. Whereas in example one, it was asking for, it said find the coordinates of the point of intersection. Okay, so two ways to write the solution. This time I'm writing it x, y, done. Okay, this is done. Good enough. Uh, if you're real big on organization, some of you might do this. You might rewrite it underneath or off to the side and then just give it a box so that you know that's your solution for that problem. Okay? So the only difference between this example and example one is that I had to rearrange one of my equations in order to isolate a variable. Heading into example three. Example three, we're gonna just be solving using element uh, substitution again, example three. In example three, we're given two lines and it says, where do the lines 2x minus y equals 4, and 4x plus y equals 9 intersect. So what's the what form is my solution going to be in? Yeah, it's asking for where these two lines intersect. Where? So I want a, I want a location on the Cartesian plane. I'm going to use coordinates once I get there to my solution, okay? First step. L lay lab label. Label. Label what? Label my equations. I'm going to give them names, really special names. I'll give them the name 1, 
and the name two. It's real easy. I do it every time. Okay. Right away, I look at that and I notice that uh, neither of them are in real great form. Neither of them have a variable isolated. Which equation would you guys like to work with? One. You want to work in one? Yeah. Uh, I disagree respectfully. Okay, um, number two. Yeah, let's go to number two. Why? Well, you, yeah, you probably want to isolate y here, but it's going to take two steps because y is negative. Whereas here I can do it in one step because y is positive. I can just subtract 4x from both sides and I end up with y equals 9 minus 4x. That's equation 2. Does it matter that it's not in y equals mx plus b? No. Not even a little bit. Okay. So step 1, rearrange one of the equations in order to isolate a variable. Step 2? Substitute. It's called the method of substitution. So because I've isolated it in 2, I'm going to sub into 1. So I've got 2x minus y. All, four, all three of our examples so far have uh, had a negative y. I've had to group the, the y expression. That's okay. It's good practice. If it's a plus sign, you don't have to do this grouping thing because the plus sign doesn't change what's in the group whereas the negative sign does change what's in the group. I'm gonna start simplifying. What's my next term? I've got 2x. Boink. Minus nine. Right. Positive four x equals four. I look over here and I have some x's here and some x's here. They're both positive. So that's easy. We've got 6x. And I may as well do two steps in one here because I want my constants on the other side. How do I get rid of this negative 9? Add 9 to both sides. 4 plus 9 is 13. Are we in agreement there? Uh-oh. What do you see? This is scary. It doesn't go in, which means it's a it's fraction. It's going to be a fraction. Does that mean I got it wrong? No. Fractions are numbers. Stop discriminating. Oh. x equals 13 over 6. Okay? x equals 13 over 6. Should I convert this into a decimal? No. no. Do you know what decimals over 6 are? They're non-terminating decimals. You don't want that. Okay? Uh, they go forever and ever and ever. Also a number, but an irrational number. Okay, so this is fine. Box it. You're halfway there. Okay? It just means that the next little piece is going to be a little bit trickier. What's my next step? Insert x into equation 1. Yeah, I'm going to take it and put it in equation 1. So here, oh, nope. We used equation 1 already. So I need to put it in equation 2. Which form of equation 2 am I going to use? Yeah, the nicer one right here. 9 minus 4x. Oh, boy. How do I write? 4 times x, if x is a fraction or a number. 4 times 13. I'm going I'm to put it in a bracket, right? And just go 13 over 6. All right. There's a couple. Now I need to simplify. I notice I have my variable over here, and all I have over here is constants. That's good, but it's a bit of a tricky situation here. There's a couple different ways I can do this, okay? I can do 4 times 13 which is 52, and then divide by 6. Or I could do 4 divided by 6, and then multiply the top, my new top, by 13. Okay? So again, a couple different ways to do it. Here's probably how I would do it. I would probably do it in two steps for simple, uh, simple sake, I suppose. 4 times 13 is 52, still divided by 6. Okay? But what do you notice about the numerator and denominator here? They have a common factor. I know that because they're both what type of number? They're both even numbers, which means they're both divisible by 2. Okay, so I can simplify this by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2. That'll give me 26 over 3. I don't have to do that step necessarily, but it does help make my numbers a little bit smaller. This is still not a final answer though. Does anyone know how to add and subtract fractions? 
I need to change one of these numbers, but not change the value of the number. I need to express 9 as a fraction over 3. Do you know what numerator I need? 27, okay. I need 27 thirds. If I have 27 thirds, that's the same as 9. Mr. V, I don't get it. Well, if I have 9 chocolate bars, okay, and I take all those 9 chocolate bars and I cut them into thirds, how many chocolate bars do I have? 9. Still 9. How many pieces do I have? 27. I'll have 27 thirds, but I'll still have 9 chocolate bars. Okay? So I've got 27 thirds minus 26 thirds. That's an easy one. I'm dealing with thirds. And I've got 27 take away 26. One. One. One what? One third. One third. Done. Did we answer it correctly? No. The coordinates in. The lines intersect at 13 over 6, comma, 1 over 3. Excellent. All right, example four. Example four is a somewhat real world uh, word problem. So we're going to think about the important information here. And we're going to be converting words to algebra sentences, okay? Do you remember what we need to do if we're converting words to algebra sentences? We need to, algebra uses variables. So we're going to need to introduce variables. Here we go. Stephanie has five more fish in her aquarium than Brett. The two have a total of 31 fish. Two sentences. What are we trying to do? How many fish does Stephanie have? How many fish does Brett have? All right, so I'm gonna introduce variables. Introduce variables. I have somebody named Stephanie and I have somebody named Brett. Anyone have any ideas for which variables I should use? S and let S be what? Let S represent what? Stephanie. Just her? Like her? It's just her? Like the number of fish she has. Let S represent the number of fish for Steph. Let B represent the number of fish for Brett. Okay, I introduced my variables. What's my next step? Give you a hint. What's my next step? What do I have to do next? Create two equations. Okay, thankfully I have two sentences. All I need to do is translate those things into algebra. Sentence number one. Stephanie has five more fish in her aquarium than Brett. So Stephanie has five more than Brett. Would you suggest that's true? B plus five, if I know how many Brett has, then I get five more and that's how many Stephanie has. Yes. Okay, second sentence, you go ahead and write it. Did you get the same as me? Step three. Yeah, if I need to. Do I need to? I don't because I already have S in terms of B. I have Stephanie expressed in terms of Brett. Next step. Substitute. 
substitute the expression for s in equation 1 from equation 1 into equation 2. Okay? So I'm going to take the b from equation 2 and I'm going to add s from equation 1, which is b plus 5. Notice I did not need to use a group in this case because it's addition. I could group it like that, but plus b plus 5 is just plus b plus 5. Okay? And that equals 31. How do I simplify? How many b's do I have? 2b. And what do I need? How do I lose this 5? Because I just want variables on the left. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And b equals? Thirteen. Thirteen. How many fish does Brett have? Thirteen. How many fish does Stephanie have? Eighteen. How do you know? Because you add five. Okay, I'm going to go into equation one. Stephanie has equals b plus five, which is thirteen plus five. Stephanie has eighteen fish. Because it's a word problem, uh, by the way, you want to verify that answer. So you want to look back and you want to go... Uh, yes, 18 is 13 plus 5, and yes, 18 plus 13, or 13 plus 18 is 31. Okay, so just verify it mentally. And then you want to write a concluding statement. The question was, how many fish does Stephanie have? Verify. Steph has 18 fish. And another question, how many fish does Brett have? 13. Brett has... 13 fish. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've got a decent chunk of time here to get ahead on those practice problems. You notice at the bottom, I also have a little box there that tells you the key concepts uh, of this lesson in order to remember it. But basically, as you're going through your practice problems, you're just flipping back in your notebook, reading through those steps. Step one, introduce variables. Step two, rearrange and isolate. Step three, substitute. Step four, simplify and solve. Step five, sub that value back into the other equation. Step six, check your answer. Okay? You're looking at practice problems. Practice problems from page 21. Number three, four, six. And for all of those, you're looking at A, C, E, G, I, dot, 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 dot. Okay?